Hello everyone, my name is Divya Cyril. My teammates and I are here to talk about a technology called microneedles. What are microneedles? Microneedles are small needles ranging from 25 to 2000 millionth of a meter. It is made of various materials. However, some are made of a hydrogel forming material, which is similar to the material used to make soft contact lenses. It is an alternative microscopic applicator that are used to deliver drugs or vaccines across various barriers. The material feels like Velcro or an emery board. How it works. Microneedles are designed to be applied to the skin like a patch. The medication is stored adjacent to the microneedles. It is a hard material in dry state so it can penetrate through the skin. When the patch is pressed onto the skin's surface, the needles are able to cross the outermost layer of the skin and the fluid from the skin results in swelling of the needle and forms a jelly-like material. This creates microscopic pores and it is through this jelly material the medication is delivered into the dermal layer of the skin that is rich in blood vessels. It can also pick up biomarkers and medicines that are already in the patient's body for monitoring purposes. The needles are so fine and small, the dermal nerves and the blood vessels are unaffected, therefore resulting in no pain or bleeding when the patch is pressed on the skin. Current conventional needle injection generally delivers its vaccine into the muscular layer beneath the skin. This leads to the accumulation of vaccine in the muscle tissue and only a small amount of the vaccine will be effective. With microneedle injection, we can target the intradermal layer where the Langerhans cells reside and directly elicit an immune response. As the Langerhans cells are tissue resident microphages of the skin, capable of invoking an immune response. This would effectively increase the efficiency of the vaccine and reduce the amount of vaccine required to achieve the same effect. There are four types of microneedles, and they are solid microneedles, coated microneedles, hollow microneedles, and dissolving microneedles. There are three materials used for manufacturing microneedles, silicon, metal, and polymer. And microneedles have many benefits, as it is quick, painless, impede needle phobia, no risk of bloodborne transmission of pathogens, and allow self-application. Solid microneedle utilize a patch of tiny microscopic needle to puncture the hypodermis of the skin. The depth of the puncture is not deep enough to activate no receptor, hence painless. The solid needle patch is then taken off and the vaccine patch is applied as shown in the figure. The antigen will diffuse into the skin and produce an immune response at the Langerhans cells. Solid microneedles are generally made from metal material. However, the only downside to solid microneedle is that it requires two application steps, which may affect the patient's compliance. Coated microneedles incorporate the needle and the vaccine patch together by coating the needle with the vaccine. The microneedle patch is applied to the skin and the vaccine will be delivered simultaneously to the intradermal space directly. Coated microneedles are advantageous as it only requires a single patch application, which would likely to increase patient compliance. The disadvantage to coated microneedles is the limitation on the thickness of the vaccine coat. If the vaccine coat is too thick, it may lead to decreased delivery efficiency due to decreased sharpness. This is then limit the quantity of vaccine administered, hence the type of vaccine applicable to this method. Hollow microneedle is a great advancement from the coated microneedles, as it solves the problem with the limitation of quantity of vaccine allowed to be loaded. Hollow microneedle has a hollow center in each of the needles with the vaccine patch placed on the top of the hollow needles where the vaccine would then diffuse through the needles into the skin when applied. The ability to load higher quantity of vaccine allows the application of this technology to a bigger variety of vaccine. The only issue with hollow microneedle is that it requires a consistent flow rate for the vaccine to diffuse. However, during penetration, the tip could be blocked by the dense dermal tissue. Polio and influenza are the two most anticipated vaccines for the usage of hollow microneedle technologies. In vivo trial using animal model for these two vaccines has been shown to be very successful. Lastly, we got the dissolving microneedles. These needles are made from pure silk fibrin or polyvinyl alcohol. The vaccine is infused into the polymer material and will diffuse into the intradermal space once penetrate the skin. The dissolving microneedle patches allow sufficient loading of the vaccine dose while also being quick and easy to use. 
However, the polymer materials have low mechanical strength, which prevent consistent and reliable skin penetration. Ethically, micronators are far less invasive than subcutaneous injections and pose a much lower risk of infection to patients. Currently, there are questions of the ethical use of microneedles for tracking vaccination records and whether this is an invasion of personal privacy. Microneedles have a positive impact on society as a whole. They're more accessible to those in impoverished communities, meaning that medications and vaccination are better accessible. They feed less into the fear of hypodermic needles that commonly occurs, and they also allow for the tracking of medical history to improve medical care over time. The economic benefits of microneedles is that they're far easier to produce en masse. This means their manufacturing costs are lower, up to two thirds of that of hypodermic needles. Thanks for watching.